Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Explosive Light Dynamite, it's Monday night. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Radio for the Soul. The intro music you hear before each show is my spiritual group, Lavender Soul. I uh, really missed the project. Hopefully, maybe we can contact the boys uh, and see if we can get this project back together for maybe another album, maybe a couple of shows here around uh, Memphis, Tennessee. For those who are interested, I've been doing a Burst of Light live feed uh, on Facebook. The first one was on anxiety. I had amazing success, how many people that it reached. The one I did last week was on meditation. Another very well-received well show that came per many people's request to learn about the art of meditation. This Tuesday night, well, that's tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central Time, go to my wall at facebook.com slash Keith Anthony Blanchard. You might have to refresh the page a couple of times, but it'll appear. And I will probably start about 10 minutes after 7, give time for people to collect and gather. It's going to be on the subject of explosive clarity. I will be doing spiritual readings, not from a psychic point of view, though there will be some intuition involved. It's more from the perspective of getting you to explosive clarity so you can figure out for yourself, because nobody knows more about you than you, uh, figure out for yourself uh, how to meander um, through the monkey mind and find that clarity, but also to be able to manipulate and balance the energies that are inside so you can bring forth the life that you've been doing through struggle, but through a practical place of just ease by getting back to the basics. And I will dialogue with you and help you get to that explosive clarity. And I promise you in a week or so from, from that point, you will contact me and say, hey, Keith, uh, what you shared with me is phenomenal. Can I have more? And my answer is absolutely. Stay in touch with me at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. We'd love to see you for the live stream tomorrow night. And we're going to do this by first come, first serve, because whenever the word spiritual reading is involved, people flock by, <laughs> by the thousands. So be looking for that. Still no word on Swamji Viswa Yogi coming back to Memphis. God realized man from India, nor yet from Nucleus 8, my alien human hybrid friend who is head of security in this quadrant of our galaxy. And probably I haven't heard from him because he's a very, very busy 4,740-year-old individual. <laughs> uh, make sure you check out the brand new Center of Light radio website. When you get to the opening page, you'll see a subscription form. Fill it out. You will have access to my monthly installment newsletter program, and you'll also have access to, gosh knows how many empowering different things. I do the research. I do many upon many hours of research, whatever it is I'm looking for, and you can bet I don't just go into this with kind of believing what I think might be true and then report that to you. That is not my gig. I follow this rabbit as far into the hole as possible, and I will dig even a little further to see if there's some other uh, ravine going somewhere that might lead me in a different direction. And when I come back and report this to you via this newsletter, I'm very, very confident and very, very solid about the information I hand to you that empowers me, that I, in turn, want to empower you. I love helping. It's my gig. And it's not coming at you from a fixing you point of view. It's coming to you by sharing with you uh, something that will just expand you you in your life. And again, you can get out of the fight and get back into who you really are, which is a being of ease and effortlessness. Uh, if you are a YouTuber like me, go to YouTube and look up uh, Center of Light Radio. In fact, I just changed my YouTube uh, URL. Yay, boy, what a process that was. Go to youtube.com slash Center of Light Radio. Subscribe to my page. Comment if you can. If there's an interview that you really, really dig, um, leave a comment and some thumbs up whenever you can. That helps me refine my guests because you're telling me you dig these particular subjects and these particular subjects and these particular subjects. And also, uh, it helps support the Center of Light Radio archives because it makes them become more visible to the listenership out in YouTube land services. I do many, many types of services. Heck, we can invent a couple of new ones if you like. Uh, I've been doing speaking engagements for many, many years. Um, I can do life-changing presentations on any level of spirituality, divine incarnations, my experiences with extraterrestrials who have been here or here now. And I'm thinking sometime in our near future cosmic disclosure is going to happen and when you understand the alien ufo phenomenon it's a little easy it's not so spooky regardless of all the bad press that it gets for the division of those in the 
control seat, I guess you can say. But I can do presentations on all those subjects, and you can contact me at Keith Anthony Blanchard and Gmail. Also, I do life coaching, help you get out of the box. Again, always about handing you the tools that you need. But if you have spiritual squatters, dark spiritual squatters in your house, ghosts, poltergeists, just bad people who don't need to be in your house because they're not paying rent. You know, I have an I come with an arsenal of information, and I've used this very arsenal of information to help other people elevate the energy in their house. Um, and as quickly as they came in, these bad people will leave because the vibration of you and your home and your loved ones have ascended, and therefore you and they become invisible to each other, and your realities don't cross-fade, and that will be that. And I will not just hand you the information and, and split. I would be in it with you all the way, because if you have having someone who's really, really causing you not only just trouble by just being aggravating and being there, that you are threatened. I understand. So I would not want to walk away from you because I do care. I would do whatever it takes to make sure that your house returns to the happy, loving home that it was ever intended to be. And now it's time to get down to Center of Light Radio business. Today, my guest is Miss Renee Brown. Renee Brown is a very, very dear friend of mine. In fact, between her and I, I did my part for the Divine Principle to become a bestseller. But she was my partner in that campaign. Uh, she's the one who launched the campaign and had it become the success that it is. Uh, I want to just share that with you. This is my personal relationship with Miss Renee Brown. Have you ever been secretly wrestling with an uneasy feeling because you just know that you're not fully engaged in your own life? Renee says, I recently went through an amazing experience that felt like an epiphany explosion. Because it fueled me to step out of my mostly okay but not deeply fulfilling life and move across the country to Utah, she did, to begin the new life she had been planning to do in the near future. You know, as soon as I got all the pieces perfectly in place. If you've ever experienced a clear moment in your life when you just knew, you absolutely just knew, bones to bones, it was time to go beyond everything that's been holding you back. And you're ready to say yes, but maybe you want a little guidance about inner wisdom tools. You'll need to launch into such a life transforming journey. Then you will want to catch this interview. Listen to it all the way to end to the end. Today's show titles Epiphany Explosion Journey to the peaceful power through joyful presence. Let me tell you Renee's actual bio. Renee Brown is a spiritual vision coach and a Zen and Zest lifestyle mentor. Her personal warmth and loving wisdom creates a sacred container in which you will feel completely safe to relax your mind and open your heart. You can then fully embrace and implement her tools and teachings, blending science and spirituality, or metaphysics, if you will, and utilizing vibrational energy. Renee works with heart-centered people to help then clear their mind and refresh their focus. Her passion is to champion you to deeply know your innate worthiness to live in joy. She assists people to design a new life vision and create powerful and joyful momentum toward achieving what is most meaningful to them. Ms. Renee Brown, welcome to Center of Light Radio. Thank you, Keith. I'm so happy to be here. And hello, everyone. And also, a little later, shortly, um, Renee's going to give you a, a give out some information about how to receive this new gift she is offering. Let's start from this new place in your life and this new spirituality that you're moving into about jaunting off across the country. That, that can be <laughs> nerving, and, but it's also there's a liberation. And tell us about how that came about and how was it for you to actually do that? Well, thanks, Keith. Yeah, you know, it is. It's one of those things where it takes courage, you know, and it takes, um, you know, faith. And at the same time, you're going to have some ups and downs. You know, you have to, you have to be ready to and prepared and, ex, you know, expect that there's going to be a little, maybe a little nervous wobble now and then, and then get yourself through it, you know. And so, uh, I had always thought I would do this as I was getting closer to like the quote retirement age, not that I'm ready to retire, but I was like, you know, I, I should move somewhere new and, you know, not just stay where I am just because I'm comfortable being there. And, you know, it just, it just, I just, all of a sudden I just knew over the holidays, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to try somewhere new. I'm ready to um, 
you know, I, I was in Memphis for a long time. I loved it. There was really not a lot of reason for me to stay any longer, you know, the way my life had transitioned. And so I thought, why do I keep investing, you know, money for, you know, rent, which was going up and things like that? Why do I keep investing more in what's actually my past, not my future? Why am I waiting till I get all the little pieces in place perfectly, you know, before I do it? Instead, why, you know, can I do it? And I just started researching the various places I might think about moving to, and I just decided to do it. By New Year's, I was ready to go. I, was, I had my plan, and I put it into motion. You know, you're telling this reminds me of me when I went to India. I went alone. People were like, Keith, are you sure you really want to go by yourself? And I was like, yeah. Um, and during the adventure, I felt the nervousness. I felt, I wouldn't say fear, but I'm sure it had some tone of that in there. But through the anxiety of doing that moving to Memphis, uh, going to India, heck, I'm, it applies my moving to Memphis. The excitement of it all seemed to overshadow any of the nervousness that was there. Was it like, like that for you? It is mostly. I Here's what I would say to be completely candid and uh, completely transparent, you know, and talking to anyone who's looking at some kind of epiphany in their life where whether, you know, I'm not saying you need to pick up and move because you have to be careful. You can't move to try to reinvent yourself because you take yourself with you. So you do need to be aware, very conscious of why you're moving so you're not running away from something about yourself because you're going to take it with you, right? So um, I, there, what I've what I learned is that you know is if you've done the work before you move or before you jump into whatever this epiphany explosion for you might be, if you've done the spiritual work, you understand, which for me means you understand how to manage your energy, which means your focus, your emotional awareness, uh, and you have your and how to tap into divine guidance. And then, so when you get that fear, when you get that anxiety, whatever it might be, then you're able to shift it quickly and not let it escalate into, uh, you know, really, you know, extreme anxiety. And then at the same time, have a support network so that if you do need something, if something does happen and you need support, have that ready to roll. You know, don't be, it takes courage and strength to ask for help. And so by all means, we all are here to support and love one another in our growth. I'm glad you said that a minute ago. You said that no matter where you move, you're bringing you with you. Because if a person believes that, I understand sometimes change just has to happen because something just went completely awry and you want to leave your network and just go start fresh. I get that. But if a person believes that they're leaving where they are to go someone somewhere else, the situation may change for the first six months because it's new and fresh and you're excited and nervous and all those things. But you are still you no matter where you are. So if you creating your life by default, consciously or unconsciously, and you don't clean out that unconscious stuff, it's just going to materialize right back in your life. And you might as well just stay back where you were and save the money from the move. I agree. I really do. And I think, I think it's like you said about whether it's a vacation, like you did the trip to India, uh, which was, or, or a spiritual journey, which was, you know, you can also consider a vacation or whether it's, a move or whether it's a change of job, you know, career change, uh, starting a new business, relationship change, you know, whatever it is, um, if you're if you are really in touch with yourself and you understand why you're doing it in a conscious way, so you're not running from something, you're moving to something that's within you, then you're just setting into you're setting yourself into a new environment to help support this new decision you've made. And then the like you, it's like you said, then the the exhilaration of it, even though there's some instability and there might be some uncertainty from time to time because it is new and it is unknown and it's not familiar. And you know you're out of your comfort zone in pretty much every way, then you can get, you don't only just get through it, it actually, it liberates you, like just kind of like what you were saying, Keith, it liberates you. And you then what is cool is then you're like, huh, this is a part of me I didn't, either I didn't know was here, or I kind of knew it was here, but I never fully, freely expressed it. So, correct perception and all that you said is not that you're moving to a new place, it's that you are moving to a new space. 
Yes. <laughs> it's, and it's an internal <laughs> as where, yeah, it's an internal as well as an external new space. Exactly. For me, it just happened to be also external. Yeah. So Renee, how do you help people find a sense of renewal and replenishment for their mind and heart? Well, you know, I it, the things that I have found in my life, uh, for me personally, and then as I've worked with clients as a coach and a spiritual mentor, and in the past as a chaplain, and even as a youth ed director, what I have found is that there's a couple of things that really cause a person to get stuck. And uh, I really think they it, it primarily falls into two um, categories or two experiences. So one of them is what I call split energy. And what that means, I mean, first of all, let's let's kind of go back and, uh, and let's set the groundwork. Um, everything is vibration. You know, in, Einstein taught us that many, many years ago. And for, I think most of your listeners are, are already in an understanding of um, their energy field is vibrating, resonating at all times. Their emotions is an in, is actually the indicator of uh, what that vibration can, is, how it can be measured. Literally, it can be measured now, you know. And so, if if you become a, you have this big desire, you're foc- you know you want this desire, you want this desire, and you focus on it, and at the same time, you either doubt that it can happen. Or you have a fear that it won't happen. You're not worthy, deserving, capable, something like that. That creates um, the anxiety. Like I love the show you did about it. it. That creates what I would call split energy. And one way it expresses is anxiety. It's literally like you're standing on a boat dock with one foot, and the other foot is on the boat. Like you're at the lake, Yikes. and there's a boat, and the boat's leaving and you got one foot there and you got one foot on the dock and you have to decide. You have to decide where will my pure focus be in the boat going this way or staying on the dock. Neither one is a wrong choice, but if you have the split energy, you're going to, you know, fall on your butt basically in the lake. And get wet. And get wet. (laughs) And it might even hurt. Yeah, could hurt. And I've done that. You know, I really do understand it. I have great compassion for it. I, I understand that there's some times where um, you have the, the fight, flight, or freeze thing going on, and you do end up, you know, and it's okay. We've all done it. You know, don't, the most important thing is to not judge yourself or criticize yourself, and then by all means, not shame yourself or let anyone else do that. So that's one of the things I have found that is a uh, gets people into that stuck energy that I can help them sort of undo. And the other one is, I think we get really confused about taking responsibility for being the creator of our life. And I had a really interesting conversation recently with someone who called me asking me to help them understand that a little bit. And uh, I won't go into a lot of detail about this scenario because I want to respect the confidentiality, but it was someone who's been through a lot. I mean, it really tough things, some tough, tough stuff. And I have great compassion. You know, we've all had things that are just overwhelming. It's part of the human journey, I think. And what, what I think it's confusing is someone who says, well, my heart's good. You know, I'm a, I think she, this was what she said to me. And I, 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 I believe in the goodness of people and I have positive thinking. So why do these things happen? Well, it's a, and I was trying to say, you know, it's not quite that on the surface. It's much more complex. There's an energy momentum that's been going on for a while and it's playing out and we can shift it. But you have to really get clear about where it's coming from if you want to shift it. And so one example of that would be, she was saying, well, I have all these people doing these negative behaviors, and yet I believe I'm a good person, so I don't see why I'm attracting that. And I, so my, my explanation for her and anyone listening, and I've found it in my own life in the past, is you have to get really clear about, well, I can't control the other person's behavior, but I have to take responsibility for why am I the person who's rendezvousing with that behavior? Why am I not rendezvousing with people who are being more kind, loving, et cetera? And why am I rendezvousing with people who are being irritable, grumpy, or sometimes maybe downright mean, you know? And 
it's not that you're a bad person. It's that there's some kind of energy momentum going on that you're not, you haven't let yourself get completely conscious about so you can process it and and then shift powerfully in a different direction. So it won't continue to be your future experience. Basically get new friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but remember you take yourself with you. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, yeah, it is an important to get and I think, you know, part of that is boundaries. Like you said, some bound maybe you just need better boundaries. What is cool is I've helped people do this with relationships and that and that when I say that I mean sometimes it's relationships in love relationship, partners, sometimes it's with children, sometimes it's with colleagues, friends, neighbors. When when you really start getting control of your resonance, your energy vibration, and you really practice it very consciously, the people who are irritable and grumpy or mean, they kind of just, they just sort of fade out of your life. It doesn't have to be dramatic. It can be sometimes, but it's not always. Sometimes it's a lot easier than you think. Yeah, when you make changes within, things on the outside change. And if it's you're around those people who are just not congruent with a higher path that you are wanting for yourself, even though you're the one responsible for associating and networking with the people that you wish would change, it's really the power. When you take the power back, the power works in your favor. And it sounds like everything you were describing here, Renee, are unconscious ideas, unconscious things that are people are battling with. Like, for example, anxiety is definitely an unconscious thing. But everything you described sound like it had to do with the unconscious. How do you suggest people begin to tap into and find out what those unconscious thoughts are so they can actually change them and begin a new social network with people who they really wanted to be with? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, and, and I do want to say I do have a free gift to help people with these kinds of things. And whenever you're ready, we'll give out how people can go ahead. Contact. Give it out now. Yeah. Why not? Okay, so the gift is, and I'll then I'll answer the question as well. We can actually go through the process a little bit. So the gift I have is called Seven Minutes to Your Peaceful Power. And I really like to emphasize peaceful power, not just power. Um, I love the book Power Versus Force. And it's important that we understand power is not, you know, as I use the word, and I and I think it, your audience also is like this, we don't mean force, we don't mean domination or any kind of violent behavior. We mean, you know, our own empowerment, you know, and then expressing power because of our, our high consciousness energy that we cultivate carefully. So, um, the gift is called Seven Minutes to Your Peaceful Power. It's an audio, it's a guided visualization. It was actually recorded uh, on another interview I did, and then I've added, uh, with a partner of mine, it's really cool, I've added some vocal toning, which is a really um, lovely uh, form of music therapy. And so, we've added that, in, you know, mixed that in. And it turned out to be a really beautiful, powerful thing. So that's available. I have a little handout with it. So you actually have the affirmations to use. So you can use them and be holding them while the toning is going on, things like that. So the way to get it, it's real simple. There's like, I'll give you a couple of options. One is you can just stop. Uh, send me a private message on Facebook. If you don't, if that's something that you don't know how to do, you're not connected with me, you can post it in either the Keith's page here or post it in my group page, which is Zen and Zest Lifestyle Cafe group page. Or you can just send me an email, Renee, R-E-N-E-E -E, at Zen and Zest.com. Z-E-N-A-N-D-Z-E-S-T dot com. E any of those options, and I'll be glad to send this to you. So the answer to the question is, you really have to learn to cultivate consciously a positive high vibration momentum. It's not just an in the moment vibration, it's an overall momentum. So let me let me say a little bit more about that to, to explain it. So you can have a momentum going in so many different ways at the same time. And then together, collectively, it does create your your dominant or most most consistent resonance or energy vibration. So let's say that in terms with in the in the on the topic of money, uh, you might be strong on that one. And on the topic of health and fitness, maybe you have some anxiety, some fears because you have a health problem or, you, or there's a family history that you're worried about. 
And then there's relationships. Those are the three areas most people focus on, relationships, money or career, health and fitness. So if one of those or two of those is really strong, but another one has a lot of anxiety, it brings down your overall vibrational resonance moment to moment. And then think about it this way. In each of those areas, you have subcategories that vary. So you might have a wonderful relationship like you do with your son, right? And then uh, somebody else might have, okay, I have a great relationship with my children, but maybe a challenging relationship with a parent or a neighbor or a colleague or something. So even within the one area of your vibration on relationships, you have mixed vibration, right? And so what happens is, If you will learn to just, first of all, don't judge yourself. Absolutely don't judge yourself. Start with what I call a sacred container, knowing that you are cherished every tiny little nuance of you. Uh, You know, warts and all, as some people say, every little nuance of you is cherished by your creator. So you don't just get loved and supported by the universe when you behave, quote, perfectly. You know, I think we're all... Well, we don't need it then. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. And I think we're all imperfectly perfect. You know, it's just we have our own variations of quote perfect, right? And so, first of all, relax. You are cherished. You don't have to be quote perfect. And then the second thing I like to think about is I call it a sacred compass. You it's really important that you learn to focus on oneness with your source as your sense of security and validation. And I know you really touched on that when you talked about anxiety, and I thought that was really beautiful because a lot of anxiety comes from misunderstanding that, of course, we want to be comfortable in our human element. We're human. We want, you know, the zest of life as well as the zen, the inner zen. Um, and and I do too. We want financial security. We want health and well-being. We want to feel good in our bodies and have energy. And we want relationships that are fun and loving and exhilarating. We want all of that and we deserve all of that. But we don't get it by thinking our security and well-being and validation of worthiness comes from people or the money in the bank or the car or the house or the clothes or whatever. It comes from our connection to our original source, and then it expresses in these other ways for us to enjoy. And then the third piece of it I call sacred calibration. How do you feel the fullness and the freedom to explore life and express pure you and then let yourself really expand into who you are, all of you? And I I think it happens when you give yourself permission to have these epiphany journeys, whether it's a little epiphany or a big explosion of epiphany. So what I do is I work with people and that's why I created, I literally created this this tool I'm giving, the seven minutes to your peaceful power. I literally created it to help people with anxiety and help people learn to validate themselves and feel their alignment with their source as a way to calm their fears and learn every time they have a what I call a wobble, and I got that from the Abraham Hicks teaching, but when you're in, when you have this wobble where you feel a little nervous, a little insecure, you feel unsure of yourself, you're some negative thing is happening. At that point, that's when you need uh, a little help to regain your alignment. And so that's what this uh, tool is for. It's seven minutes to your peaceful power. Keith Anthony Blanchard, your host of Center of Light Radio, Monday nights, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find me sitting here in this chair doing all the affairs of the heart. Tonight, my guest is Miss Renee Brown. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio, 
Look at the opening page, the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome power pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works. You can bet. All you have to do is contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. Renee, I really love the fact that you talked about momentum. We can look at anything that's moving as momentum. But I think the word momentum really applies to the metaphor or to the imagery of a train. Once a train gets moving, it takes a lot to bring it to a halt. And you use the word momentum, which I adore that word because it's it's so powerful. The imagery behind it that it, it invites with it uh, is so big. Renee, tell me a little more about joy and the process and the things that occur when living in it. Okay, Keith, here's why I be- believe that joy is so important and why that's, you know, living in joy is like my slogan and uh, obviously my logo, as people can see on the banner. I um, I first learned about this through the teachings of Esther Hicks in the Abraham teaching. And then more currently, I love this new younger new teacher, Vishen Lakiani, who uh, is the founder of Mind Valley Academy. And he has a book out recently that I read. I loved it. And he explains, he calls this concept bending reality. And what he means by that is, he says, how do you make things happen faster? How do people like, you know, Richard Branson and um, uh, Tes- the Tesla guy, how do these people get um, things to happen faster and more powerfully than what seems possible? And it's what we sometimes call magic or miracles, you know. And I think of it as the way to live in a space constant flow of everyday magic and miracles. Well, he calls it bending reality, and he says there's two parts to it, and he and he gives credit to learning this from Esther Hicks, and he says there's two parts, and the first part is you need to make a daily practice of living in absolute awe of what is happening in your now in your present, be present and be in awe of the beauty and magnificence of life. Everything about life, people, nature, um, savoring the food, you know, the if you're like me, I'll have a good cup of coffee in the morning, savor it, and um, your pets and your loved ones and your children and your friends and and the music, you know, like we were talking about your music, you know, the the joy of music and how it moves you and dancing and your body, the joy of having a healthy body that you can be uh, moving around on this planet in. So part one, live in absolute awe of your now. And then add to that a joyful anticipation of what you desire, knowing it's underway with joy and positively expecting it to come about, absolutely positively knowing it is coming about, it is unfolding, it is in process. And the combination of those two, he did all this research with all these phenomenal people, and the combination of those two is what he calls bending reality. It's what I call learning to live in a flow of everyday magic and miracles. And that is why joy is really powerful. And David Hawkins in the book in the book we were talking about, Power versus Force, he's actually he can give you the the frequency. You can Google his chart on these various emotions. And it's it's one of the highest emotions. And uh, Abraham Hicks in there they have another chart on vibrational energy and resonance, and they they believe that joy, l- love, meaning a pure divine love, and appreciation, which is that awe, are all the highest vibration that a person can experience and resonate. So that would be a three-sided coin, if there's such a thing. Well, uh, you know, we get out of duality, all things possible, but that would be three <laughs> facets of the same idea. They would be all the same. Just different variations. You know, that's it's, it's amazing. You talked about bending reality. The other night I came home from a gig and I had everything ready to start doing a Facebook just two o'clock in the morning live stream vid on bending reality. And of course, because the software is new, I forgot to click a button and <laughs> nothing happened. But today I posted something on social media about Greg Braden doing a presentation about these Chinese or Jap- I think it was Chinese holistic practitioners 
who were treating a woman with bladder cancer, I believe it was. And what they did was they had a sonogram ultrasound hooked up to her so you can see the tumor in her abdomen. Mm-hmm. And they brought themselves to a state of joy, and they chose a particular word. The word has no power whatsoever. You can say shoebox, or you can say candy bar. It really doesn't matter. But these mm-hmm. three holistic practi- practitioners chose this word because it reminded them of the space that they needed to be in to stay in that feeling of the joy that they're going to have when this person was healed. So they begin to chant this particular word, um, which created the feeling in them that it is done. I think the translation of the word is, it's done, it's done, it's done. And right there on the sonogram, in a matter of three minutes, the cancer dissolves into nothing. So I, I love the idea of bending reality or bending time. You know, if you think about when you do something you love with some people that you care about, or if you do something that you enjoy by yourself, an hour's time is a flash. But you go sit in a doctor or a dentist's office for an hour. <laughs> and so <laughs> what happens? I mean, nothing's really changed except what we are bringing to the table. Yes? Absolutely. And, you know, it's really cool. I have a business colleague that I work with in Australia. And so we get on Skype to have conversations. And uh, at one time I was on a conversation with her in Australia and another of her colleagues in Costa Rica. But Australia, it was it was evening for me. It was the next day already for her. So we're talking on two different days simultaneously at the same moment. So it really gives you the understanding of how much of our reality is perception and how much of it is labeled. It's It becomes and feels, quote, real to us because of what labels we give it. And then we we have this sense of belief in it. That's what makes it true for us and not true for someone else is we've assigned a belief to it that someone else doesn't have. That sounds like a very simple way of describing what happens when you look at subatomic particles. If you look away from it, it's a wave and potential energy. And when you look at it, it becomes a particle. Same idea. Yes, it is the same idea. It's what you decree it to be is as to why it makes it so. Yes, it, that's exactly it. And that is how um, a lot of uh, very wise people, very um, an, uh, from ancient text to modern uh, quantum physics and epigenetics, that's how they would explain the miracles Jesus performed, is that he, w- he had the capacity to hold this sacred container of high vibration. And, the, and then if the person had faith in, his, in him to do that— and would open and receive it, open in their heart to receive it, then there would be this instant miracle happening, this instant manifestation of of healing, um, water turning to wine, oil, which back then was a form of wealth, oil filling a vessel. So there was all kinds of miracles, the fish and the loaves, you know, never running out for all the crowd, things like that, because he was able to hold the vibration, um, what's considered the alchemy of... um, Shifting, like you said, shifting from an you know from one atom to a particle, and understanding it that energy is all, always fluid and in motion and expanding, and we and it's about aligning with the expansion and and you know what that's like as a musician getting into the cosmic life stream because there's only a flow, there is no non-flow, and you are either consciously in the flow, you are in the flow regardless. Your conscious participation in it is what makes things really groovy for you. And I love that you brought up Jesus in that particular point, because Jesus, there's there's a particular scripture that someone, a woman touched Jesus's cloak in the back and she said, Master, you've healed my loved one. He said, woman, I did no such thing. It was your faith in me that did that. That in and of itself totally blows the dogma out of all the stuff to me in the Bible that could have been in allegory or metaphorical, because when you have someone who's a spiritual master like Jesus, now keep in mind, this is Jesus, and he said, Mm -hmm. you will do the things I do, if not more. This comes out of his mouth. How can we do things more than you if he is so exalted above who we are? He's exalted to the realm because he's consciously aware of who he is as as his essence. That's what exalts him. But it's not that we're less. It's just that he is aware of his divine effulgence while we're just awakening sparks. 
Yes. And I, as you know, uh, I was raised in the unity uh, beliefs and which is metaphysics. And they do teach that, you know, from especially the uh, the Bible, but especially the New Testament, they do teach uh, about the understanding of Jesus. And they always reference him as a master teacher, that at least growing up, that's how it was done. And the way shower and the master teacher that we he came to teach us how to align our energy and how to receive and take this divine substance and mold it into uh, beautiful things for life, beautiful uh, expressions of joy and beauty and empowerment and comfort and blessings for ourselves and everyone, all of us. And that expand. and every time, you know, because of the oneness of all life, every good thing we do blesses the entire universe. I don't mean just even our planet Earth, which is a cool, if you can even grasp that, that's pretty cool. But I mean, if you can, I mean, sometimes it's hard for me to grasp too, but every every light wave we're sending out by our energy and our f- pure focus, hopefully positive, you know, emotional energy and pure focus is impacting the entire planet. That goes back to that, you know, the, the butterfly effect, as they call it, where the they now have the science to prove the theory that the butterfly, the flap of the something as fragile and delicate as the wing of a butterfly impacts, you know, the waves of the ocean on the other side of the earth. Sure. So, um, we're, everything we're doing, we are in every moment, um, I've heard you say this and I believe it too, every thought is a prayer. What are you praying for? Are you praying for something in faith or are you praying for something in fear? And, you know, and I love the idea that you are talking about the fact that when we do whatever it is we do, we are impacting the whole. If God is omnipresent, dictionary says present in all places at all times. It's in my shirt. It's in my hair. It's in the chair that you're sitting on. So it's everywhere. So the whole is imbued in every fragment. So if the whole is imbued in every fragment, then everything I do affects the whole. And it's all immediately local. It's here. It's not out there. It's in your auric field. The entire universe is in your auric field. And so I can understand how we affect, because now there's science saying now that when you do something to an electron in this part of uh, our universe, and there's the the opposite electron on another side of the universe, well, when this one changes, the other one automatically changes in, in the exact same exact moment. So obviously, everything we do is affecting everything across the board infinitely. Yes, and I love, I do love uh, sacred geometry. What a beautiful way to to look at life. And one thing I want to bring up, though, is to is to calm any you know anxiety or any or quell any angst about we we are influenced by everything in our environment, and nothing can force itself into our personal energy field without being invited. It's it's our resonance that determines and or what we rendezvous with is is one way I like to look at it. And so like I've heard you talk about, you know, living in Memphis and people are worried about crime and you're completely happy wherever you go and you don't worry about it. And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's um and it's it's hard to understand. It's not that in, not, the universe isn't doing something to us. It's that we can be worried and fearful and invite something into our experience, whether it's an outward experience or a internal, you know, health experience with our bodies or you know, financial setbacks, you know, and we've all done it without realizing it. And as we as as Maya Angelo says, as we know better we do better. You know, Renee, I live in a part of town that other people would say, Keith, I can't believe you, you know, I can understand that you might live there, but I can't believe you stop at some of these stores that you do when you need to run <laughs> and get it, whatever. And, you know, I, I, I understand where they're coming from because of the mindset. It doesn't work that way for me because, you know, if you was to stop in there at the store with that mindset, I can see why you would think that because likely you're going to put yourself in a situation. As soon as I get out my car and I see people moving them out, I'm already shaking hands and talking to people and opening the door. How you doing? How you doing? Next thing you know, I frequent the store five, six, seven, eight times and I see the, the regulars there. They're already shaking my hand and waving at me from a distance. And if something should ever arrive, now I got people on my side who will support me in whatever I might need in any given moment. So, I, I, I like you said, I don't put my eggs in that judgmental, erroneous perception basket. We are at the top of the hour. Thank you for being a powerful guest on Center of Light Radiator. That door is always open to you. Very articulate, very, very well together. 
Monday nights, 6 p.m. Eastern time, I am here in this chair doing what I love doing. It's all about doing what you love, and then life gets pretty juicy. On next week on Center of Light Radio, my guest is going to be Tara Janelle Walsh, uh, spiritual famed author, Neil Donald Walsh's daughter. And we're going to talk about soul courage. I will look forward to seeing you next week here on Center of Light Radio, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Everyone have a wonderful evening, wonderful evening, wonderful evening. And also remember, YouTube channel, Center of Light Radio, go subscribe to my page. I'd appreciate it greatly. Peace, love, and light to you all. And thank you, Jimbo, for uh, your first time here at Center of Light Radio in the chat, uh, Jim Bob Short. Please come back and see me, my brother, Sonic. Uh, everyone, thank you again in the chat room. Have a wonderful evening. Peace, love, and light.